you have quite a remarkable story. Picked cotton in Louisiana as a child, graduated college, got your MBA, yes. got your law degree, moved to Chicago. A non-machine politician, all told, will serve 20 years as the clerk of circuit courts. Yes. <laughs> Reaction. It's very, very uh, touching. Uh, very surreal. Uh, you know, when I think about that little girl in Louisiana, Brad, and and just and where I came from, my family being poor like they were, and to come here in a town like Chicago and accomplish that is just surreal, just amazing. Um, and, and it kind of, you know, makes you a little emotional. Eighteen months ago, you wanted to be mayor. Now yes. you're throwing in the towel. I'm not really throwing in the towel. towel. You know, I had made, I, I really looked at it from the standpoint of I wanted to uh, go to a different level from a political standpoint or a for-profit standpoint. That did not happen in a political standpoint from the mayor's office. Uh, so, you know, I decided that this is a great time, 20 years in, fully vested. I can use that as a foundation to move to the next level in my life, in my next chapter in my life, and do even more. I'm going to continue community activism, probably start a foundation to help people, to help even more people. I, I, you know, expungement process is something that I'm known for nationally. I want to continue that legacy. And then, of course, from a financial, technology, legal, and leadership standpoint, I want to be able to help others. And so I want to just go to help others go to a higher level as well as myself. Um, you're a churchgoer. Yes. I need to ask you, <laughs> as God is your witness, did you ever use your elected position to profit financially or otherwise, directly or indirectly? As God is my witness, no. And that's why I'm sitting here today, Brad because I have operated at the highest of integrity. And you know when you are saved and you are a church goer, if you will, and church going is not what it's about. It's about being, having, being saved in your heart and knowing what to do, uh, the right thing to do. And that's how I've always operated with the highest of integrity. Never profited off a land deal? No. Not a kickback for a job? No. Ever force an employee to donate to your campaign? Absolutely not. And I pushed that from the very beginning, explained to individuals that if anyone in this office ever pressured you, I was the person that they should come to. You know, all those things were, that land deal was arm's length transaction, period. And some people say what you've done, if you've done it, Let's say you did get donations from employees. It's nothing that hasn't been done by dozens, if not hundreds, of Irish white politicians <laughs> throughout the history of Chicago, be it a Daly, be it a Burke. Do you think you've been scrutinized unfairly? I've been scrutinized differently. I'll put it like that. But I also feel that, you know, there were people that I terminated when I took office that from the very beginning decided that they were going to, quote, unquote, get me. And they worked and worked, and they basically went there, and they told some lies. Of course, when you lie on a politician in Chicago, that's, you know, uh, when you tell those kind of lies, people have to investigate, which is fine. But at the end of the day, the best defense is a good offense. And the best offense is to make sure that, regardless of what rock they turn over, that they find nothing. Ever been interviewed by the FBI or another law enforcement agency? Never. Do you know if there is an ongoing federal investigation, or do you believe you've been cleared? You know, from, what I, well, from where I sit, I have never seen the federal government actually 
make an announcement that they are no longer investigating anything or anyone. So I don't expect them to ever make that kind of announcement. I just simply live my life and I will continue to operate at the highest of integrity, serving and helping as many people as I can. What do you want your legacy to be? I want my legacy to be that I did everything that I possibly could to serve the people. I help thousands of people, Brad, get a second chance. I get people walking up to me all the time talking about now they can work, they can take care of their families. I wanted my legacy to be that I helped as many of my staff people here to be able to go to another level in their professional careers. And I appreciate my staff people, I appreciate my supporters, I appreciate my family. My husband especially for standing with me because they tried to take him down as well. For standing with me, for helping me to get the things done that I have done in this office. And so it's about service for me. It's always been, that's always been in my heart. Since a child, I just believed in helping and serving people. Some detractors will dog you and say, in your 20 years, your systems as circuit court clerk are 20 years behind. Computers are antiquated. You're still using triplicate carbon copy paper in some of your courtrooms. Why? That's what they'll say, but I have brought this system into the 21st century. I brought it out of the dark ages. So it took a long time to get it there. But next month, I will start an implementation of a $36 million case management system. At the end of that, when I get, that's going to be the criminal and then the civil and then the traffic, all of my records will be imaged. The only, right now, all of our records except for minor traffic tickets are electronic images. Whether you bring me paper in the courtroom, I image those documents. Even the computers that the press uses are digital and they then say that they're not, I have no digitalization in this office. My last thing that I want to do in this office is make electronic records the official court record. And I have, next month, I'm going to be putting in a disaster recovery plan. I will have at an undisclosed location in another state an entire duplicate of my electronic record here so that I can, during a disaster, if there's a disaster, start this system over within an hour. Once I do that, I will be able to apply to the Supreme Court to make the electronic record here the official court record. Um, so basically, your vow is fully online by the time you're out of office. Fully. Everything fully. will be fully electronic, and you will be able to see everything from the courthouse. In order for you to see it from the computer, the electronic images. Of course, you can now see the electronic information, just not the electronic images. The Supreme Court would have to approve individuals to be able to see the images. Before I leave office, I hope that the Supreme Court at least uh, have the process whereby we can show the attorney of record and the party to the case electronic image on the uh, online, on the internet. Electronic images of uh, case files? Of all case information, yes. That would case be information. yes. That would be images, case information online by 2020. That that is my hope. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that at least a part of, of that would be for the party of record, mm -hmm. and for the attorney. As for the general public at large, that's an approval that we will have to wait for from the Supreme Court. Um, are you going to run for something else? It is not my intent. Done. My, plan, my plan is to go in the in the private sector and work for the uh, for-profit arena and take my skills and help as many other people as possible from, to do things like business process reengineering and and helping them from a technology standpoint. Using all of my skills, 
uh, to to go to a higher level, help myself as well as others go to a higher level. One more time. Um, will you run for another public office? I have no plans to run for another public office. Um, can you, not a game, but kind of, um, I'd like it in one word or two or three. I'd like to name politicians. I'd like to name politicians, name politicians. and you say a word about each. Because you've been around the game. I have been around the <laughs> So I'm going to name a politician, <laughs> and you say what comes to mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> the last Mayor Daly. Interesting. Ed Burke. Powerful. Danny Solis. Troublesome. Carrie Austin. In a sad state. Mike Madigan. Longevity. Tony Preckwinkle. Powerful. Rahm Emanuel. That's a difficult one. Um, challenging. Barack Obama. Great legacy. Lori Lightfoot. Intelligent. Rod Blagojevich. Misguided. Donald Trump. Say it. I think you played, played really well with that one. <laughs> um, you spoke your mind. In, in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were one of the first people to kind of inwardly and talk and organize and say, you know, we, we really have a chance as an African-American community to take over the mayor's job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you stunned at what happened? They en ended up having two African-American females in a runoff for mayor, I was not stunned at it. No, I was. Uh, yeah, I mean, not you kind of called it. You said if we, if we, if we, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. um, well, what I said was that um, I just felt that that people, the electorate is 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 very smart now. They pay attention, and they are not voting. Uh, cross racial using race to vote anymore. They're voting their best interests. What can you do for me as a person? And I like that in Chicago. I like that about Chicago. And I just felt that uh, if you if you were able to, you know, uh, really uh, reach the electorate. Uh, especially the way I've done over the years in the, with this clerk's offices, and they trust you and believe in you that they will vote for you. So it did not surprise me 
that they that we had two African American uh, women to um, be the top two individuals. And of course, I was out on the trail uh, with them, so it did not surprise me at all that Lori Lightfoot won that race. Um. What's it say on your headstone? What does what say in my head? What's it say on your headstone? I'm sorry. Oh my, oh yeah. my God, on oh my headstone. I'm not going to talk I mean, about a well, Let's well, not talk I'm, about a headstone. I'm, not Let's saying, see. I'm just saying. Uh, so, so, so what do you want to say about it? It's all said. Uh, I mean, you know, a girl that grew up picking cotton in Louisiana to rising to the top ranks of political power as an outsider in Chicago. What's your epitaph mm-hmm. say? This is what can happen when you work hard, do the right thing, even when all, everything is stacked against you. And I say a lot of times when number one is not good enough, because when I came out of college, Brad, I came out number one in the college of business, number one in the department of accounting, but no major accounting firm would give me a job off. No major accounting firm. And to come from that, to be able to come here and to become the uh, elected clerk for the second largest court system in the world, without the support of the most powerful, what people consider the most powerful democratic machine in this nation, says that you can be whoever you want to be if you just simply work hard, do the right thing, so that people trust you. All, I mean, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. So stay the course. Well, I like that you interesting have, sometimes number one isn't enough. Number you had, one to, is you not, had to push beyond that. Had to push beyond that. The number one is not good enough. That's what I tell young people all the time. It doesn't matter. Number one was not good enough for me. But I had to push beyond that and come to the Chicago and just make it happen anyway.